So we open this furniture up. I guess it's a shelf or a um, something to put like a, a tchotchkes on, whatever. I mean, there's barely any furniture in the box. It's a bunch of screws, literally. And uh, and, and instructions that no one could follow. It didn't, didn't even make sense. It's like the, the instructions are like the, you're bothering them. They're like, here, this is we sketched it out on a napkin. Do do your best, you know, uh, look at the bo- the picture on the website. Yeah, they, they, they just don't make it very easy to assemble these things yourself. Steve Weiner here from GetRebix.com, and today we're going to talk about the age-old problem, uh, I don't know about age-old, of getting bloatware out of Windows. Look, I'll be honest with you, I don't even buy stuff that I have to assemble myself. I, I can't really figure it out, but I'm just saying if I did, these are the problems I, I would anticipate. Solving for the modern workplace. So before we get started, I want to take a moment and address everyone's feedback. Uh, people seem to be a big fan of everything, and a big part of that is because apparently I don't run my uh, my stuff here the way a lot of folks do, um, and uh, I couldn't really put my finger on what that meant. So I'm going to try to show you the two different uh, ways people can go about doing videos like this, and uh, I don't know, maybe there's some kind of difference in them before we get started here. So. Uh, let's try it like a normal human being, and then I'll try it like myself. One of the most common challenges with deploying Windows out of the box through a provisioning method like Autopilot is dealing with unwanted pre-installed applications. When you stop imaging and you, you go to modern provisioning and you're using Autopilot, we all got the same problem, bloatware. These unwanted applications in Windows are often referred to as bloatware mainly because it adds bloat to the actual core Windows operating system. What is bloatware? It's uh, simply the crap you don't want on a PC when you give it to an end user. Even Windows Pro and Enterprise commercial devices will contain these unwanted applications. Now, why is it there in Pro and Enterprise? I, I, I have no clue. I, I don't know. They just they put it in there. So today we're going to look at several methods to uninstall these and not just remove them once, but hopefully have an automated way to keep them from coming back. So today I'm gonna to show you how to get rid of it. Get rid of it so that it's gone. Okay, so when you're using Autopilot to deploy, the easiest way to strip out any unwanted uh, bloatware is by using the Autopilot branding package. Um, and you know we've talked about this a lot on the channel. I have videos on using it, um, but just to kind of show you the way it works, um, you know, this is the package by Michael Niehaus here and inside of it, he has a config XML file and this lays out all of the applications you can target to be removed. So while the package is deploying, it'll go through and it'll uninstall these. So if you're using autopilot, can't recommend this enough. This has kind of been like bread and butter for me for standard deployments. So, you know, definitely check that out now. Just to talk about the kind of bloatware, I'm gonna to go to this, um, this is a kind of a clean build. So there's not too much here. There might be stuff you don't want, but let's, let's use this machine as an example to talk about how PowerShell works with identifying and removing this stuff. So, so there are two types of packages that you're gonna to wanna to be familiar with when it, comes to, when it comes to trying to remove bloatware. And one is called an Apex package make this a little bigger one is called an apex package and the other is called an apex provision package so what's the difference here well the apex package is the package as it exists for the current user right um it's basically an app that's installed on the machine. An app X provision package runs a little deeper. That's installed to Windows and it's set to be staged for every new user. So for example, if you remove an app X package, it'll get rid of it for that you know, user. But in the autopilot branding script and the method we like to use, the app X provision package will get rid of the app from the device so it is not staged every time a new user signs in. So that's the one we're gonna wanna go after. So if I run get app X provision, let's see if this will, there it is, provision package. Um, now you see nothing comes back because you need some parameters with it, right? You need this online parameter. Okay, 
A uh, little hard to see all this in this view. So if you recall correctly, we like to use the out grid view. So we're going to call the same. We're going to call the same thing. Yeah. So we're going to call it again, but we're going to use a pipe to do OGV. That stands for out grid view. And that'll give us a very nice grid to look at everything. And we could see the display names of everything. We could see the install location, where it is. Let's clear this. And let's go back and open the list of the provision packages and see what we got here that we might not want. So these are things like news, search, weather, um, the gaming app. You have like Xbox, for example, on there. You know, we look at paint that's there, clip champ. So these are things you just might not want on the device. So let's talk first about how PowerShell works with getting rid of those. So let's use uh, clip champ as an example. So I'm going to do get Apex provision package online where the object now we're going to have to get its display name. So display name is like clip champ. Uh, we'll probably need some asterisks in there because I don't know 100% what it's called. Yep. And that'll bring that back for us. So that's the app. And if we wanted to remove that manually, we could simply do one more pipe and we would just say remove app X provision package online. So that should have removed it. So if we go back now to try to get it, nothing comes back. And if we look here, ah, now why is it still there? That's because we removed the provision package. So let me show you that. So if I'm going to go to settings, let's go to accounts and let's make a new user. Let's call this Bob. So let's sign out of us and let's sign in as Bob. Now, if our calculations are correct, that's a very back to the future-ish thing to say. Uh, there should be no clip champ for Bob here as part of his, you know, normal apps. So let's go through this. Okay. Let's take a look. Yep. And there we go. So that's how we remove a provision package. But what if I want to remove it from the current session? Because I have, you know, clip champ right here. So that should show up under just the Apex package. So get Apex package. I make this a little bigger. Yeah, there we go. Get Apex package where object name is like clip champ. And there it is. Okay, so to remove it from here, I could just simply do a remove Apex package. And I think there's a force. No, nope, we'll just do remove Apex package. And now you can see it was uninstalled. So, yep. It's gone from my list here. So, you know, those are basically the two types of bloatware removal. And what usually happens is folks try to use the get Apex package one, not realizing it's just going to come back. So now that we've talked about how it actually works and how we can remove it with PowerShell, um, let's talk about how we can automate it out in Intune. Now, there's a few different ways here. Obviously, autopilot branding is first. That does the best job. But let's talk more about ongoing management. So you can have a list of bloatware that you want to remove. And we could simply make a script for PowerShell to go through all of it. All right, I'm going to make a new folder on the desktop for this. And I want to call it dbloater. And inside, we are going to make a new script. I'm going to call it dbloat.ps1. And I will make this stuff available in the uh, in the GitHub here, of course. So what the first thing I'm going to do is make a list of um, the apps I don't want. So I'm going to say bloat apps equals. And this is going to be an array. And for the purposes of this, I'm just going to use a similar method to... Uh, the autopilot branding package. I'm going to define some apps I don't want here. All right, so I'll just stick with those four for now. Um, MS Paint, Solitaire, Clipchamp, Xbox. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a for each app in bloat apps installed 
equals get apex provisioned package online. Actually, we need some parentheses here. Where object display name is equal to app. So what we'll do here is that'll be if it's installed, that'll be the app. So we'll say if installed, try catch. So we'll say try to do so installed, remove Apex provisioned package online catch. We'll just grab the error and we'll write host error removing app. There we go. All right. So this would essentially take care of removing things from a list. Now you can deploy this as a platform script. You could deploy this as a, a, a remediation, I suppose, to look for these. And if any one of them are found, trigger the, the remediation. Either way, you have a, a way to remove the bloat where you don't want. But there is a problem with this. The problem is things change. So what if there's new bloatware you don't want? Or what if you switch to a different PC manufacturer and they start including something? So how are we going to set something up dynamically, right? Uh, where you have one script running to check for bloatware but you can update it as needed without deploying a whole new package or script. All right, so what we're gonna do is to kind of like abstract this is we're gonna create, um, again, we're gonna, we're gonna take a similar approach to the autopilot branding. We're gonna create a new document and call it um, bloatware.xml. All right, so this XML, we're gonna call this bloatware. And the thing about XML, it's all about just opening and closing the brackets here. So we're gonna, Make it a very simple list. It's going to be called bloatware. Bloatware apps will be the inner tag. And we're going to just make an app tag for every app we don't want. So in our case, it's going to be uh, clip champ, clip champ, oh, champ. Okay, and then we're going to go and do Microsoft Solitaire Collection. Uh, what was the other one we did? Microsoft Paint, I think. Microsoft MS Paint. And finally, we also had uh, Xbox. Microsoft Xbox app. The benefit here, though, is we can store this somewhere, like Blob Storage, for example and constantly add to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna go to my blob storage. So here in my Azure storage, I have an account with a uh, container called bloatware and the access level is anonymous read for blobs. That way they could, you know, it could be read, but can't do anything to it. So I am gonna upload this XML file um, so that it sits up there. Let's go desktop, debloater, there's the XML. All right, so that'll sit there, no issue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab its URL. So in my script, what I could do is instead of having this here as the bloat apps, uh, I'm gonna do a few things. So we are going to invoke a web request. The URI is that and the out file is going to be, we could actually use the relative path ps script root and we'll call it um, bloatware.mxl, xml. Well, and then we'll say xml uh, bloat apps equals get content path and that'll be ps script root bloatware xml actually let's call this bloat xml because now the bloat apps will be bloat apps will be equal to bloat xml 
dot apps because we want to target this middle area here. So actually we can make that apps. All right, there we go. So that'll pull down the file, right? Place it in the relative location where we're running the script, run through it and remove it, right? So if I deploy this to Intune, let's say to run, um, you know, either as a remediation or as a package, and I decide, hey, I want to remove more bloatware. All I have to do is go to my Azure storage, right? Update the XML file to include more apps, right? I could simply come in and add, you know, uh, whatever I want, Microsoft 3D, whatever, some Copilot stuff, uh, printing, doesn't matter. Whatever it is you want, you just add to this. And now you don't have to change your original script because you don't have this anymore, right? You're just pulling it all from here. So it'll kind of be like real time uh, updating. Like I said in the beginning, bloatware has always been an issue, but um, you know we have so many ways to deal with it now that it's definitely come a long way from where it was when I started all this in 2015 and it was, was a showstopper. So a lot of ways to deal with it. Like I said, for provisioning, autopilot branding, hands down, super easy to do. For ongoing removal, hopefully I helped explain a little bit of how the bloatware works, what your options are to get rid of it, and now you have a way to kind of dynamically update that unwanted list in real time. We'll be seeing you.